planets were added to our family. The green planets Uranus and Neptune were spotted out beyond Saturn. Then, in 1930, using this fairly small telescope, astronomer Clyde Tomba discovered the ninth planet, Pluto. And that's when things began to look a little strange. Pluto wasn't like the other planets. It turned out to be very tiny, made of ice, and on a weird orbit that actually crosses the orbit of Neptune. What's that all about? Clearly, Pluto was a different kind of object than the other eight planets. Now, the picture is even more complicated, which is why many astronomers today think of Pluto as a new type of object. It's the king of the dwarf planets. This is the actual device that Clyde Tombaugh used to discover Pluto. It's called a blink comparator. And the two pictures of space are these white circles on either side. Uh, they're negative so that space is white and the stars are black. That just makes them easier to see. And when you look through this device and push the little button, there's a shutter here that alternates from one picture to the other, winking back and forth. Of course, it's a lot easier now because there's an arrow pointing to Pluto. Clyde Tombaugh didn't have that. See how hard it must have been for him to spot that little tiny moving dot and doing this night after night? He spent about 7,000 hours before he finally found that moving dot that we now call Pluto. And what an amazing world it is that he found. It's cold out there on the edge of the solar system, six billion kilometers away from the sun. A warm day on Pluto is about 230 degrees Celsius below zero. And you think our winters are cold. It's not a very big planet. It's only about two thirds the size of our moon. Pluto has its own moon called Charon that's half as big as it is. Pluto's actually a double planet, and both worlds are made mostly of ice. Dr. Mike Brown is a modern-day Clyde Tomba. He finds other Pluto-like objects out beyond Neptune, where Pluto lies. He's now found so many of these ice balls that he's the main reason Pluto is no longer called a planet. One of the proposals uh, of what to call a planet was anything in the solar system that's large enough to be round should be called a planet. And round, is, it's not just an arbitrary shape that astronomers happen to like. It's round, round is the shape that things become when they're massive enough. They have enough gravity to pull themselves into a, a sphere. So some astronomers wanted to say anything out there that's round should be a planet. If, if that had been the definition, there would have been probably 200 planets, which, which is a lot of planets. The other definition, the one that got accepted was that